Yeah, hello everyone. I'm uh, Vijaya. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Arista. Uh, in this section of our talk, we are going to uh, look at a few uh, um, considerations where uh, the Wi-Fi 7 features would derive the best benefit, right? So uh, uh, do all the features work all the time or should we be judicious in uh, choosing when we want to turn on a few of these features, right? So in all, um, uh, there are about five features that are um, mostly touted as the ones that are going to uh, give us best benefit. Uh, the uh, first one being the multi-link operation. Uh, just like uh, Ashwin just showed, uh, there is a huge uh, diversity among the client behavior on multi-link operations. Of course, it does take two to tango, so uh, it's not enough to support multi-link operation at the AP. Uh, we would expect the clients also to support, uh, you know, um, this operation to derive the best value, right? And uh, the second uh, feature is the um, you know, MRU allocations, um, again, uh, we have seen quite a few um, different behaviors across clients in terms of the support for MRU. Uh, the, and uh, the, the third uh, consideration is that uh, there is a huge uh, diversity in the client ecosystem, right? So we would see typically that the you know, the Wi-Fi 7 client ecosystem uh, is gradually maturing. So we would initially see only a few percentage of the clients being uh, 11B clients. And it you know, in the next uh, couple of years, it would, you know, probably increase from 20% now to about 90%, right? So uh, there is a um, there is an impact of the different uh, client compositions on the overall uh, performance in being able to use the best of Wi-Fi 7 features. Uh, the next feature is the preamble puncturing. Um, uh, so if the amount of um, client composition is mostly legacy dominated, uh, we wouldn't be able to make, uh, make the best benefit of preamble puncturing. And in that case, it might be better or wise for the AP to do a channel switch rather than you know continue with preamble puncture because in that case because if it continues with preamble puncturing the legacy clients might lose on uh, the uh, you know the uh, channel bits that they can uh, potentially use right uh, so uh, so it might turn out that um, it might be a wise decision to hold on uh, hosting preamble puncturing um, and you know choose to do channel switching when the legacy kind client composition is high. And uh, the the next uh, feature is the T20 megahertz channels. Uh, of course, uh, a wide channel width would definitely, um, you know, result in huge uh, throughput gains. But uh, this is definitely um, of a regulatory concern that we have because not every geography in the world is, you know, uh, Every regulator in the world is allowing 320 megahertz channels, and uh, and it depends on the amount of uh, spectrum that is available for 6 gigahertz. Like, so for example, US is, um, you know, lucky to have uh, 1200 megahertz spectrum, but in the EU, if you see, we just get uh, only, you know, something close to less than 500 uh, megahertz of the 6 gigahertz spectrum, and in India, we don't even have that, right? So using 320 megahertz channels is subject to the regulatory constraints in specific geographies. Uh, the last uh, feature uh, that uh, Wi-Fi 7 offers is the uh, 4K form. Uh, and uh, studies have clearly shown that to be able to achieve or use 4K form, the SNR has to be as high as 40 dB. So that means that the client has to be really very close to the AP, right? And in an enterprise environment, we can't uh, expect the users to cluster around AP. So this is a feature that we, uh, you know, we would see uh, being used in very specific, uh, you know, uh, use cases or scenarios, or probably mostly in say uh, home Wi-Fi, it might be a better feature to be used rather than in an enterprise Wi-Fi scenario. So, uh, uh, so continuing with uh, the study that uh, uh, taking off from what, where Ashwin has uh, uh, stopped. So, Ashwin's study has mostly been on single client uh, behavior, 
uh, on Wi-Fi 7. But uh, what we go ahead now is uh, to understand the uh, Wi-Fi 7 feature benefits in, in a network loaded scenario, right? Uh, so we attempt to understand or investigate this behavior uh, either using simulations or tests wherever it is appropriate. Uh, the first uh, aspect that we want to study is the EMLSR throughput benefit. And uh, we want to examine, does the benefit hold under a high loading condition? Because uh, it is easy to, you know, uh, to show benefits under when a single client or two clients are available, but uh, does the benefit hold under high loading conditions, right? Uh, so our, um, uh, so this we attempt to study both via simulation as well as testing. So in the simulation environment, we have a Wi-Fi 7 AP uh, and an EMLSR uh, client, uh, which is capable of 5 and 6 gigahertz. And we have uh, uh, interfering uh, clients, uh, one of them on 5 and one of them on 6. Yeah. So uh, uh, what we see is that uh, the under 50, uh, so these clients uh, generate 50% loading. Now, what we see is that even uh, with 50% loading uh, of OBSS loading, we can see that EMLSR um, gives about 100% throughput improvement, right? And about 40% improvement in latency, this, which is, you know, kind of really high um, numbers. And we'll see uh, whether this gain uh, is held when we increase the loading, OBSS loading from 50% to 70%. And it gets even better. So uh, with uh, when the OBSS load increases to 70%, the gain is much better because the single link operation suffers worse, right? So, but overall, what we can expect is that the DMLSR operation um, definitely uh, gives good benefits even under high uh, loading conditions. Uh, so what we go ahead and test this in a real scenario, we have a DMLSR client and a single link client. And we test this under very high interference, so about 90% of OBSS interference. And what we can see here is that um, the uh, even in real life test, we have seen that the throughput improvement is really high, and even the latency is, uh, you know, um, uh, the throughput improvement is um, even higher uh, when the uh, uh, when the lo uh, loading is increased to 90%, right? Um, and we we do a similar uh, study for the STR MLMR client. Uh, so in this case, we use uh, APs on both the ends um, because we wanted to look at the maximum throughput that is possible on an MLO link, right? Uh, so, and then we induce a low interference because we have already seen the high interference case. With Even with 20% interference, what we see is that there is about on an average, 57% higher throughput uh, 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 from for the STR MLMR uh, operation when there is no interference. And uh, when there is interference, the actually the throughput increases because the single link uh, throughput um, uh, suffers uh, in, the, in the presence of interference, right? And then we go to the interesting case of uh, studying the impact of uh, the client composition of MLO clients gradually increasing from, uh, say, 20% to until um, 90%. So we start with a, so in all we have, uh, we simulate about 30 clients. Uh, so we have, initially we have, we keep the composition of the Wi-Fi 7 clients low, which would originally be uh, in a practical scenario, we have 20% of uh, 11B clients and 80% or AX clients, right? So the, what we observe here, interestingly, is that the Wi-Fi 7 client throughput is not impacted. They hold very high, um, uh, they hold their high gain um, even when the composition of the AX clients is high, right? And the, we, what we have seen, what we, in this scenario, we have the AX clients evenly distributed on both 5 and 6, right? So what we see is that this, the Wi-Fi 7 client throughput is not impacted by AX clients. And in, in fact, when the composition of the AX client, of the BE clients increases, the throughput for everybody increases, right? The overall average throughput of the system increases. And that's a good, uh, uh, you know, that is good in the, you know, uh, enterprise scenario. And we uh, continue uh, this study uh, where uh, 
for a bidirectional traffic, the previous slide was only for unidirectional traffic, the uh, downing traffic. This is for a bidirectional traffic. Even in this case, we have seen that the Wi-Fi 7 client throughput is not impacted by the AX clients, as well as uh, the even the latency of the you know BA clients keeps uh, low. And uh, so, uh, so what we can conclude is that the as the composition of the BA clients keeps on increasing. Uh, the 11 AX clients also benefit from the opportunistic switching that the BE clients do across the multiple links, right? Uh, so, which results in an overall better performance for the end, uh, network as a whole. Yeah, so did that you, is what uh, we have. Yeah. Did you see o OFDMA in use during these tests? Uh, no, we we did not uh, enable OFDMA in this case. Um, uh, we did it only uh, without OFDMA. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, hey, Vijaya, thank you yeah. so much. Uh, thank you, folks. Uh, as you can see, I mean, we've uh, you know we're doing a lot of simulation uh, in our labs. Um, I think we are pretty excited about Wi-Fi Seven. Um, and like I said, you know, we have. Uh, we're going to be pretty aggressive in launching our Wi-Fi 7 products. You'll see more announcements coming uh, in the next couple of quarters. Um, and uh, Robal, I know you had very specific question. Um, we are running short on time. Uh, so, um, you know, happy to engage with you offline um, to walk into some of the details. And if there are very specific things that you would like to see, um, you know, please uh, let us know. Because like I said, uh, you know, we take your feedback seriously and we'll provide an update in the next mobility field that I promise. Uh, 